July, 1846. Ireland's early summer harvest is starting to come in. Reports of blight circulate, but in the east, summer has been temperate. The hunger might be over. Lightning rends the sky. Water drops like a guillotine. An unhealthy fog blankets the land, and upon seeing it, one fisherman tells a newspaper that it's the wrath of the fairies. I knew it by the signs they were coming. And perhaps he's not far off, because a tiny, malicious organism is riding the rain. The water washes fungus spores off the infected leaves, carrying it to the ground. And under the soil, the 1846 potato crop begins to decay. So that's how it happened. Yeah, frick, uh, Krillin just gets owned. In January 1846, Daniel O'Connell had stood in Parliament and warned that Peel was not doing enough to fight the famine. There are five million people on the verge of starvation, he warned. And I'm speaking from the depth of my conviction when I say, I believe the result of neglect will be death to an enormous amount. Now, eight months later, Peel was gone, and the government was doing even less. Hunger began pulling Ireland apart. Mothers starved until their milk gave out and their babies died. Men who had survived off food depots and public work projects found succor in neither. Orders had been given to food depots to preserve their grain until December. It didn't matter. People arrived at the depots on foot, shoeless, having not eaten in days. Depots relented and passed out cornmeal, but their reserves were getting low. Gangs of men carrying shovels marched into market towns demanding work. Food availability was not the problem. Amid the famine, bread sat in shop windows, and Irish merchants exported tons of beef, grain, and oats to England. The government refused to intervene, so across the island, starving peasants did instead. In County Waterford, an armed militia blocked two barges that were transporting Irish grain for export. That done, they moved into the town, beating merchants, stealing bread, and lighting buildings afire. A unit of dragoons ordered them to disperse. When they didn't, the soldiers opened fire. Six bodies lay in the street. They were just starving Yet, people Ireland for fuck's sake. Famine, in London, Sir Charles Trevelyan was retooling his relief plan to be less generous. Trevelyan was a legend in the civil service. Incorruptible, pious, and hardworking. But he was also a workaholic micromanager steeped in the Victorian belief that poverty was the sign of moral failure. Oh, suck a dick. The Irish problem, the fact that Ireland remained trapped in a cycle of poverty, violence, and rebellion, lay in the Irish character. Oh, They were fuck lazy, off. rebellious, and took no initiative, he thought. Potato cultivation was too easy, only requiring a few months' labor a year, breeding idleness. And it was prone to failure. And when it failed, the Irish turned to government to feed them. Absent or neglectful Irish landowners shouldered little of the cost. And London feared that the Irish were becoming habitually dependent on government aid. To save Ireland, he thought, it needed modernization and agricultural reform. He dreamed of an anglicized Ireland, like the one that existed in its cities and market towns. One with English-style capitalism and a market economy, like theirs, to serve as a trade partner. He wanted to sweep out Ireland's communal village life and barter system, replacing it with a workforce that worked for wages rather than potatoes. One where they earned money to buy food. Trevelyan saw this blight not as a disaster, but a godsend opportunity to remake Irish society. And he was determined to make the most of it, no matter how much suffering he had to inflict. Great guy. In fact, Trevelyan had studied under the economist Thomas Malthus, who argued that when a population outstripped food production, starvation and death was a natural and proper correction. When Malthus put forth the theory, he was thinking of Ireland, and Trevelyan agreed. What the so fuck are you on about? Lucian principles, alongside a commitment to non-intervention in the free market, would plunge Ireland deep into famine. So when Trevelyan rolled out his reformed relief plan, it was no surprise that its primary mission was not to feed the starving, but instead to protect the free market, prevent abuse, and teach economic lessons. When food depots reopened, the poor found that the cornmeal was no longer sold at cost. That, argued Trevelyan, undercut local merchants. Now it was market price. All food depots would close, except those in the West. And Trevelyan insisted that any maize purchased come from British merchants, 
not American ones. When the public works began again, job seekers discovered their new wages were based- I'm sorry, but you can't be protecting free fucking market and then saying you can only import British products. That's not free fucking market free from government intervention. That's a free market with tariffs and blockades of supplies coming from competitors. That's not a free market, you fucking dickhead. ...on performance rather than a flat daily fee. And even the highest wages couldn't feed a family. The wages themselves were supposedly funded via attacks on Irish landlords, but many landlords had little to spare. And due to multiple levels of bureaucracy meant to prevent fraud, the road crew's wages often took weeks to arrive. And finally, there would be no intervention in food prices. Laissez-faire economics would rule. High prices, Trevelyan argued, would attract food imports. But, you guessed it, they didn't. Food imports from where? Where well, it's only British imports. What the fuck are you on about? That's not a free market. What do you mean high prices would attract food imports? What are you talking about? You banned imports from the US, which were cheap, and you're saying that attract imports from who? Britain? So you could get extra profits from the British that are paying you off, you corrupt fucking cunt, while your people starve? You should have been crucified for this shit. In fact, food prices had soared higher than ever. It had been a bad year for agriculture, and not just in Ireland. Crops failed across Europe. Countries scrambled to import extra food. And Trevelyan was late to refill his cornmeal. So by the time he grudgingly started looking, there was little to be had. And in Ireland, potato and cornmeal prices doubled. At government food depots, hungry people arrived from miles away, only to find the maize unaffordable. Across the island, small farmers and landless agricultural workers were plunged into immediate destitution. They surged into market towns to beg for food at depots, and they even began entering the hated workhouses. A government poor relief program best described as a prison for the poor, where they lived while performing mindless work in exchange for two meals a day. And workhouses were abusive and inhumane by design, so the poor would only enter as a last resort. Yet even they were over capacity. Despite the people's desperation, Landlords upped the eviction rate, calling in police and soldiers to throw families out and demolish their homes with the sledgehammer and crowbar. Tenants killed livestock in retribution, and on occasion, ambushed and murdered landlords. Evicted families wandered the roads, pitching tents and ditches. Crime rates doubled. The so let me get this straight. You evicted people that are starving to death out of homes. And then destroyed the home because they couldn't... So you went out of your way to demolish buildings because you couldn't rent them out just to kick starving people. And literal police and soldiers did this. This was the season of the gunman. And it wasn't just the small tenant farmers and landless laborers showing up at the food depots. Managers reported small landowners, 10 to 15 acre men, approaching them to request aid, fine clothes hanging off their skeletal frames. One had even walked 12 miles to an unfamiliar town rather than reveal to his neighbors that he'd gone bankrupt. Blight compounded everything. In small farms, barley rotted in the field. Usually farmers paid laborers to harvest, but they had neither money nor potatoes to offer. And as if that wasn't enough, that winter, a series of blizzards ravaged the island, snow stacking to the rooftops, entombing whole villages. Soon, the new year dawned on what would be known as Black 47. January brought a strange frenzy. Families, hollowed-eyed and losing hair, stumbled to the shore to eat seaweed and oysters. They scaled 300-foot cliffs just to steal bird eggs. They could have survived off fish, but they had neither the equipment, boats, nor skill for deep water fishing. And by that time, most of the fishermen had pawned their nets for cornmeal. Armed gangs ambushed government food convoys and butchered stolen cattle to survive. By the end of January, 700,000 had turned to working on public works. These famine roads were often a waste. They started nowhere and went nowhere. Malnourished work gangs broke rocks in freezing temperatures. Their shoes and coats long ago lost to the pawn shop. And they died there, in great numbers, collapsing beside the roads from exhaustion. 
Violence against public works managers became so pervasive that many deserted their posts, while others, laden with guilt, ended their own lives. In a famine, it's not the starvation that kills you, it's the diseases that follow. Typhus, dysentery, fever, and the famine drops. The fucking plague. Peasants fleeing the countryside carried them into cities. And infection ran so rampant in workhouses, the staff began to quit. Visitors and officials reported seeing villages where the want was so extreme that families lacked the energy to even bury their dead. The Irish funeral, so embodied in the culture, disappeared piece by piece. No one wanted to gather for fear of the fevers. None could afford a coffin. And eventually, even individual graves were dispensed with. Dogs scavenged the burial fields. Amid that landscape of horror, one place stood out as particularly destitute. Skibbereen, in County Cork, became internationally famous for its deplorable conditions. Drought exacerbated the famine. And after a few months, the frantic scramble to survive had passed, leaving only a lethargic wait for the grave. Families crawled across their cabins, too weak to even walk, and a visiting American found himself in a surreal conversation with two young women as they casually calculated how many days they had left to live. Fourteen, they agreed. Accounts from Skibbereen made the village internationally famous, the face of the great hunger, and its ghoulish tales, repeated in newspapers, inspired people around the globe to raise money for famine relief. Donations came from as far away as Australia, and in the United States, even enslaved people and Native Americans raised funds for Ireland. The international outcry finally pushed Trevelyan to act. For months, he downplayed the increasingly urgent and alarming reports from his own officers on the ground, even when they'd rebelled against his policies, selling cornmeal at cost or serving free meals at workhouses. He relented. The British government would support outdoor relief, the opening of soup kitchens and free meal distribution. But it was too little, too late. Deep famine had already affected the planting season, and the next crop would be poor. Many Irish decided they only had two options, either fight for Ireland or leave it. That's fucked up. I'm, I'm, I'm really gonna be late. You've got like two minutes. I've got, I gotta be there by two. Um... No, but it's fucked up what they, they didn't give a fuck about the people. Didn't give a fuck about the people. They didn't care that they were starving. They didn't give a flying fuck. Uh, I can't hear you, Matt. I'll do a private call. That's fucked up. That is beyond fucked up. They gave fuck all about people. Can you talk? Yeah, I can't hear you, Matt. Are you sure it's plugged in? In one hand, criminals are hurting merchants for food, but in the other hand, the system at the time was so broken they had no choice. They weren't doing it out of maliciousness. They were literally on the verge of death from starvation. They were desperate. These people weren't killing cattle or stealing bread because they were greedy. They were doing it to survive. That's not a crime. Stealing bread to feed your starving families, it shouldn't be a crime. Especially when the system's exporting the food to Britain to give profits to the ruling. That is wrong. That should not exist in society. It makes me sick. Sorry, Matt. For whatever reason, can't hear you. Like, the sound on Discord's working. It's just, I don't hear your mic. I can't believe that. That's I, I I've had nothing against you know, I've got nothing against people in general, but if this is what the if this is what the British Empire was doing, I am honestly not surprised that countries like America broke off from it and I'm not and I'm actually glad if this is the type of shit that they were pulling, that the British Empire is nowhere near what it was. Because if this is how they treated other countries that they conquered and controlled, they fucking deserve to lose all their power because this is fucked up. Not only is it inhumane, but they give fuck all they care fuck all about people. It's wrong on so many levels. It, it, I just, I just, it makes me sick. It makes me, it makes me sick.
I come from a country that was bombed to shit. I know what it looks like. War, famine, it, it's fucked up. And these people knowingly turn a blind eye? Fuck off. Makes me sick. It literally makes me sick. I just, I can't. I just... Okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Sorry, Matt, we're not able to um, hear it. I'll go to do the things I need to do, and I'll try to snip out and upload as many videos as I can, and fingers crossed they don't get hit with copyright. I'll do my best. I just wanted to give you guys this opportunity to see it online completely um, live and uncut. Um, but look, I, I, that is a failure on both a society, uh, on a you know regulatory level, uh, a social level. Uh, fucking, that is the fact that human beings could even do that is fucked up. The fact that they knowingly did it and gave zero fucks about it is worse. Simple as that. That is simple as that. The people that are literally starving to death, stealing things from stores, that's not a crime. That's not a crime. It's its not a crime to want to feed your family. It's not a crime to want to eat something, not to starve to death. When someone that has plenty is making money off it and just... I'll, I'll see you guys later. Um, thanks for coming. We we learned something. We had some laughs and then we learned something again. Um, it's something that should be taught. History should not repeat itself. Things like this need to be learned and studied so that this type of shit doesn't happen again. I, I believe everyone in schools, particularly in like, you know, education across the world, this sort of thing should be taught so that this does not repeat this sort of shit should not repeat, especially with the technology we have today. The way that information can spread today, this should never be repeated. It's as simple as that. We as, we as a human race have absolutely no excuse. Like, it's simple as that. We've got the technology and we have the food supply that no one needs to go hungry, yet millions of people die of starvation. It's not right. It's not right. It's, it's just not right. We put a priority on creature comforts like comfy beds, iPhones, and shit like that when people literally starve to death. It is wrong. Especially with the technology we have. Especially. So um, let's wrap it up. I'll try to edit this out. And uh, we'll do more reactions. We'll do more Dragon Ball Z Abridged Live, and then I'll edit it out. Thanks for coming, guys. Sorry to add uh, end this on a depressing note, um, but it is something that should be taught. So Ottoman Empire tried to send 10,000. Even the Ottoman Empire wanted to feed the starving. Like, that's something. Anyway, i got to wrap this up. Otherwise, I'm going to be late. I have 18 minutes to get there. I'll see you guys later.